So as we were talking last week about this idea of our ancestors, powerful transition happened this week. Yes, yes? yes. And now we can say that Prince Rogers Nelson is our ancestor. All of that power, all of that force, all of that creativity is now in the non-physical even more powerful, even more creative than it was here on earth. And it is our ancestor. We have access. It is operating on our behalf. I talked about that last week. All of our ancestors want to operate in, through, and as our life on our behalf, but we have to allow that. And now we have a very new and powerful ancestor. Prince Rogers Nelson is our ancestor operating in the non-physical on our behalf. That's powerful. That's powerful. And one of the things that I saw throughout the, 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 the days, it hasn't even been a week yet, a lot of people keep using the word loss. This was such a profound loss. We lost something. We lost. We lost. But every time I heard that, I affirmed within myself, there is no loss in the mind of God. There is no loss. And when we understand this powerful truth about our ancestors, what we actually begin to understand and come to know to be true is that there was no loss, there was only gain. Look at all that we gained through the, now the transition of our brother. Look at all that we've gained. And it's interesting because we say, and, and you know, we, we've, we're so accustomed to using these words. I know why people say loss. I'm not you know, criticizing anyone for using that word. I know why, because we've come so used to using those types of words and we, we think of it as a loss. But what's interesting is his body is gone. His body was cremated, right? But doesn't he feel more alive than ever before? There's no place you can go right now where his music isn't, he's, he's so alive in our memory right now. He's actually probably larger than life right now than ever before. We understand that there really is no loss. Right? And then we can take it even further and we understand that they're saying now, you know, the vault, there's enough music to put out for 100 years. Where's the loss? And in truth, there is no loss in the mind of God. One of the first thoughts that came to me after I got the news, one of my, um, one of my oldest friends, we've been friends since we were five years old, and one of the many things we shared together is I love a prince and his music, and he texted me, and I was frozen. I was frozen for a minute, and I had to collect myself. And the first thought that came to me as I talk about this idea of Prince now being our ancestor, it took me to something from a book that I love. I talk about it all the time, Think and Grow Rich. And it took me to this writing where Napoleon Hill talks about this invisible council. And he writes this. Long before I had ever written a line for publication or endeavored to deliver a speech in public, I followed the habit of reshaping my own character by trying to imitate the, imitate the mind of men whose lives and life works had been most impressive to me. These nine men were Emerson, Paine, Edison, Darwin, Lincoln, Burbank, Napoleon, Ford, and Carnegie. Every night over a long period of years, I held an imaginary council meeting with this group who I called my invisible counselors. The procedure was this. Just before going to sleep at night, I would shut my eyes and see in my imagination this group of men seated with me around my council table. Here I had not only an opportunity to sit among those whom I considered to be great, but I actually dominated the group by serving as the chairman. And so we have this awesome opportunity now that all that we have heralded Prince to be here on this earth, he's now part of our invisible council. And so if there's a moment of creativity that you desire in your life, if there's something that, that you want to create and you honor and respect the way that he created and lived fearlessly on the earth, talk to the brother. Call him forth. Call that energy forth. Because that energy that flowed through him is the same energy, is the same life, is the same God that flows in through and as you. Yes. Now, before we move too deep into the message, I just want to bring our minds back to the synopsis for this month. I want to reread this so that we understand what we're talking about. A Course in Miracles says this. No one who follows the ego's teaching is without the fear of death. Behind all fear, there is the fear of death. 
This fear may be the biggest barrier we have created to block our unlimited potential and possibility. It is the ultimate illusion. What if there was a way to overcome this fear? What if we can learn to see it differently? Today, we have many varied accounts of what happens when we die. Anita Morajani, Dr. Eben Alexander, and Jill Bolte-Taylor are just three recent and popular examples that give us a glimpse into life after life. The differing details their stories and others, uh, of their stories and others reflect the diversity of every life experience, and yet we find common themes that guide us in releasing the fear of death. Death is not an ending, it is a new beginning. This month, we will examine truths from life after life and replace the fear of death with the joy of living. Please look at someone and just say, Death is a new beginning. And so as we have taken this journey, past time paradise, don't wait until you die, a message from the ancestors, it's now time for a new beginning. To whom much is given, much is required. You're now responsible for the word that has been deposited in through and as you. You're now responsible for this month-long experience that we've co-created together. You now know something about life after life, and you're now responsible to live according to that knowing. It's a new beginning. And so as I pondered that and thought about this idea of a new beginning, we have to share the story of our sister, Anita Morjani. And I think that out of her life and out of her story, her powerful story, we walk away with five ways to now live in this new beginning. 